We're going to read an often miscited and falsely translated passage of scripture, and we're going to break it down for what it actually means. 1 Timothy 2, verse 11, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. She must be quiet, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Okay, let's just look at some basic facts here. Basic facts. Not all women bear children. Paul addresses us in this particular way where he says, I wish you were all like me, single. It's not a sin to marry, but... You know, as far as right now, we're in the last days. I, you know, all those who are who have wives should live as though they don't. And what he's saying is you need to be single-minded for God, not that you abandon your wife or you mistreat her or you're not considerate, but that or or you don't live within your covenant to your wife, but that you should be single-minded for God. And so he says, I wish you were all like me so that you could be single-minded for God because a wife is going to be concerned about worldly things and pleasing her husband, and a husband is going to be concerned about worldly things and pleasing his wife. And so he says, just like Jesus addressed this as well, that if you can, that you should remain single so that you can be single-minded for Christ, that you do better to remain single so that you can live for the Lord and not be concerned about worldly things. Jesus addressed this in a different way. He said there are eunuchs who were born that way, eunuchs who became that way by man, and there are eunuchs, there are those who choose to live as eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Well, what's a eunuch? Well, they don't have their parts and they don't get married because they have a singleness of purpose, right? And so living like a eunuch is essentially what Paul was addressing. So just basic fact, guys, if Paul and Jesus say that those who can accept this should live that way, which is how Jesus lived and that's how Paul lived single-minded for the kingdom of heaven. Is he then going to turn around and say to the virgin who has not bore children, well, you didn't bear any children, tough luck, kid. No, she chose, she chose to be a virgin. She chose to not get married for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And now she's going to be punished? No, I don't think so. So there's a context we're missing here, isn't there? And as it is, if you go to that little footnote next to woman, you're going to see that it says, or wife. Oh, well, that's different. But how long has this been used to shut women up in the church? The same context, same word is being used in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that's being cited to say that women should remain quiet in the church. But that's not, that's nonsensical. A couple sentences up, Paul says, what shall we say then, brothers and sisters? The word adelphos, which means fellow believer and includes brothers and sisters. And then he says, each of you should bring a hymn, a prophecy, a tongue. So he's telling women to speak up in the church. And then a few sentences later says it's disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. It's nonsensical. The scribes' consciences are seared. These translators consciences are seared. Jesus addressed it when he was here. They lead the people astray. You must be led by the Holy Spirit or you're not going to catch these things. And you're going to be led led astray by all the unstable people that use these scriptures in order to oppress women, in order to claim falsely that women have a different covenant than men. That's simply nonsensical. There is no favoritism in the kingdom of heaven. So let's read this again. A wife should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a wife to teach or assume authority over her husband. She must be quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the wife who was deceived and became a sinner. But wives will be saved through childbearing. Oh, that makes a little more sense. Because, you know, a virgin who never marries is not going to bear a child. If they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Now, why would he say that a wife is going to be saved through childbearing? Well, technically, all of us are required to bear children. I'm bearing children right now, even though I'm not married. I'm bearing children for the kingdom of heaven, aren't I? You are required to bear children for the kingdom of heaven. You are required to bear children to God. So technically, this is not something that is being... It's not like a stipulation that's just for wives or just for mothers because you must bear children for the kingdom of heaven. You must be a worker in the field bringing children, harvesting in God's people and bringing them to him. 
Now, a mother who has been given this authority to have children absolutely must, and a father who has been given this authority to have children must care about their children. So why are there some of you who do not? Why are there some of you who are busy in other people's households convincing yourselves that what you're doing is right because you're helping other people and your house is starving? Why is it that the word says that it is that a, a person who does not provide for their own household is worse than an unbeliever? And there are some of you who think you're in the body and yet you are not providing for your own household. You're off living this grand life of salvation, of so-called salvation. You don't know where your children are. You don't know what's going on with your husband, your wife. What's going on, guys? How have you convinced yourself that you are going to be saved? How have you convinced yourself that it is okay to go and clean somebody else's house while your house remains in filth? How have you convinced yourself that you're out there feeding people because you call them up on the phone and you tell them and you have conversations and things like this, but your house is starving? How, how is that a thing? You've forgotten about your own flesh and blood. You think you're out there bearing children and the children that God has given you to shepherd to him, you have completely abandoned. You have forgotten the child, the infant nursing at your breast. Why is it that I have to tell you that and you claim to be doing the work in which you should be hearing from God? And I've told you a thousand times that you as an individual must be healing and then he must move you to manage the house he has placed you over. He must move you to walk in the authority that you've been given. Why are these things happening in what is claiming to be the body? Do you not understand that this is your covenant? Do you not understand the words of God or do you just disregard and think, oh, he's just, you know, he's talking to everybody else or, or maybe he's mincing his words, you know, when he says, or maybe he's a man that he should lie. Maybe that's the thing. When he says that if you do not provide for your house and there's more than one way to provide for your house, you think God's more concerned about money than he is about the truth? If you are not providing for your house, you are worse than an unbeliever. I know someone in the body who continually asks her children, would you like me to pray with you tonight? Even though her children reject her, she continually asks them, can we pray together? She continues to speak with them, even though they get upset with her and they say things like, you think we're stupid. You talk to us like we're dumb. And yet she continues. She continues to do it. But then there are those of you who have been told, you had to be told to reach out to your kids. How do you have to be told to reach out to your kids? How are you so selfish that you are so concerned about yourself and your own salvation, thinking that you are on that path to salvation and you have to be told to reach out to your children. And then when they reject you, you're like, okay, well, I tried. I did my part. God knows I did my part. Let me tell you something else God says. If your house is not in order, you will never serve in his house. Do you understand what that means? If you are not managing your house, you will never serve in his house. Ever. How can you be saved? How have you convinced yourself that you are on the path to salvation? How is it that you end up being so lackadaisical in this covenant that you don't hear these things from God and a human being has to pull you aside and say, hey, where are your kids? Where's your husband? Why aren't you hearing these things from God if you're actually doing this work and bringing yourself to him? I want to remind you that Eli, who wasn't doing the things that his sons were doing, his sons were threatening people at the, at the temple. They were sleeping with the women at the, at the temple. They were doing all kinds of evil. But because Eli did not manage his house, God not only destroyed his sons, but he destroyed Eli too. And that is exactly what will happen to you. I am not going to mince words about this and I am not going to coddle anyone to hell. You will be destroyed if you cannot be bothered to care about your own house. How can the love of God be in you if you let your children die and starve while you're off taking care of somebody else's house? Don't come to me and justify yourself saying, oh, I'm doing something good. I'm doing, you know, God's work with other people. Don't justify yourself to me. 
because I do this work and I know the fruit of one who's doing it. They don't justify themselves. They are consistent and they commit themselves to the work. And they are moved by God to follow his laws and keep his decrees. And if God's word says that it is worse for someone to not provide for their own house, that they are worse than an unbeliever, then that's what the truth is. You are not justified. I don't care if you try to justify yourself. You are not justified. I don't care if you sent a couple Facebook messages to the, your child that you've been estranged from and you have it justified in your mind that you did your part. Why is God not moving you to do the things that he has said in his word? Why do I have to call you up on the phone and tell you multiple times, multiple times, not just once, not just twice, not even three times, multiple, several times I have had to say, you need to get your house in order. Why? Why is it that I've heard from people who will, who will sit and complain to me on the phone about how their wife is contributing to John Hagee's ministry and they know it's wrong and they know that John Hagee is a false teacher and when I confront him and I say, you need to tell your wife that. Why have you not said anything to your wife? Why is it that I get the response, oh no, I would never say anything to my wife because I love my wife. What? How can you claim to love your wife when you're not fulfilling your covenant to her, neither do you fulfill your covenant to God? How can you claim that? How can you define love out of that? And then when I ask, well, aren't you concerned about her salvation? And the response is, oh no, she's good. She's good. She loves God. Do you, do you hear the ridiculousness of that statement? Of that mentality? No, if you're bearing that fruit, you are not good with God. And if you won't confront your spouse about falsehood that they're living in, that they love more than truth, you don't love truth either. This is serious business, you guys. I told you a few weeks ago that God was letting me know that he was going to be, that I was going to be speaking more directly. A few days ago, he told me he was going to be speaking directly with people. So I want you to know that's what's happening right now. That's what he's waking me up with, literally wakes me up out of bed and says, you go write this down. You go speak this message. You go call this person up. That is what he's doing with me right now. You better decide if you want him or not, because I'm going to tell you right now, it will not tickle your ears and don't you ask me if I'm giving you an ultimatum as though that's some bad thing, as though that's anti-biblical. God gives ultimatums, guys. If you think this message is coming from me, you got another thing coming. This is not a comfortable message for me to speak to you. I don't get anything out of it. You better go back to him and ask him if this is his message.